High school hockey fans, welcome back to this week in Wisconsin prep hockey, the sectional edition. We are down to our final teams in the sectionals. And come Friday or Saturday, we're going to start punching some tickets for teams to go to state. So with me tonight is my usual partners in crime, Bill, Bill Jr. and Dell. And guys, let's start with the uh, boys, Division One, Section 1. Hudson playing Spash and Chippewa Falls playing Superior. And uh, I guess it's fair to say that there's some surprises. Yeah, the, the, the section of death, uh, death arrives sooner for some teams than, than we all thought. I would agree yeah, with that. You look at yeah. who's left, it's uh, one versus five and six versus seven, two, three, and four. All bid adieu. Bid adieu. Well, what do you th- what do you think, guys? Hudson is the number one seed, and they're still left in it. But I would imagine um, I would imagine at this point you kind of say, "Well, our main competition is gone." Is it? I don't think they can overlook anybody at this point in that section. I think, I think you were listening to the broadcast um, with, with Bob and Mike uh, of the Eau Claire Memorial superior game. I assume MJ. Yes. Um, You got the, did you get the impression that they overlooked superior? I think they did. Um, And then, and then by the time you get, uh, get things rolling it was too late i mean look at it this way the, the first period superior outshot Eau Claire memorial seven to four in the second period it was seven to eight in the third period it was 18 to one in Eau Claire memorial's favor like the same players were on the ice what was Eau Claire memorial doing the first two periods not playing hockey apparently and, and both of those upsets, I'm not really counting Spash over Wausau West as a huge upset because five and four in most brackets in most years are interchangeable either way. And, and Spash um, just beat them the week before. And yeah, and Spash just beat them the week before. But the other two, they were they both happened in, in different fashion. Like Superior had the first two goals of the game and then kind of held on for dear life. Whereas Chippewa Falls... They made a comeback. Eau Claire North was up uh, two to one going into the third period, two to nothing, one point. And then Chippewa Falls gets two goals, 40 seconds apart in the third period. Yep. You know, yep. at the basically at the five minute mark of the third period, they get two late goals um, to, to pull ahead. So, yeah, a couple of, and like they were wildly outshot in that game. When I was, when I was watching that game, the Eau Claire North game, North came so close to tie in that game because you could see the guys throwing their arms up in the air like they'd scored, but that puck just did not creep across the line. Yeah, they were. Yeah, I, yeah, I caught that that moment. Yeah, the, um, the shot, the shots weren't that much different in the first two periods, but yeah, yeah, Oakland Memorial. I mean, Oakland North threw everything at them, outshot them two to one in the third period, but just uh, could not score. Yeah, Oakland Memorial outshot Superior 18 to 1 in the third period. That's quite the ratio. Um, you know, I was looking at this, and you know, there are years when it comes into the tournament, and you like if you ignore, you know, their record against Minnesota, Superior actually has a good record. They're not a 500 team. But in Wisconsin this year, Superior was four, nine, and one. Against four wins, Wisconsin teams. Yeah, against Wisconsin teams, Superior had four wins, nine losses, and one tie. And those four wins were Menominee, um, Hayward, New Richmond, and Northland Pines. D2 teams. All D2 teams. And I don't want to, you know, talk down about anybody, but um, Menominee and Northland Pines are not good D2 teams this year. Um, Menominee played in a sectional final just two years ago in D2. Northland Pines obviously played in the state championship two years ago in D2. But this year, those two are not, they're not good teams. Hayward has an incredibly strong goalie, but they're not an amazing team in front of him. Um, Superior outshot them 28 to 19 in that game and won one to nothing. Um, So it's like not, but if you look at their nine losses, 
two of them, I think you'd call bad losses. They lost to Notre Dame six to one, and they lost to Baldwin Woodville four to nothing. The rest of their nine lo- or se- the other seven losses in Wisconsin were all within two goals. And if you lose to another team by two goals, you are capable of beating that team. You're not that far out. Uh, their loss to Hudson was a three to one game uh, earlier, you know, back January 15th. So, you know, you see them as a seven seed, you see, they just beat, you know, an Eau Claire Memorial team where we, we talked about last week, where if it wasn't for Hudson, we would be talking about Eau Claire Memorial this year as a generational super team because their only two losses on the season came to Hudson. Um, but, you know, Superior's record is a little deceptive. Um, you know, they're going to get, they're going to get out, maybe not Chippewa Falls. Uh, that game should actually be, I think that one will be pretty even because neither of those teams has a huge offense. Um, Chippewa Falls, you know, the last couple of years, they had Bridger, you know, in goal and they had a couple offensive players who could get them goals. They don't have those offensive guys anymore. They graduated. So now they're just relying on goals wherever the heck they can get them and, you know, hoping Bridger keeps them in the game. So Superior and Chippewa Falls is going to be a really good game. Spash and Hudson on the other end, I'm not going to put anything by in, in this division anymore uh, by anybody. Uh, I, I, I mean, based on how the Spash Wassa West game was a very even, well played game, uh, we saw Hudson just, just dominate Wassa West utterly and thoroughly a couple weeks ago. So, I mean, Spash, as good as they were against Wassa West, they're going to have to play at another level when they play against Hudson. Well, the thing that, the thing that, that that's passed it very well in that game. Um, their goaltender, uh, Jonathan Nafe, I believe. Um, m- most of the shots at him ended up in the corner. I mean, either he caught them or they went into the corner. And those that did stay in front, the defenseman cleared them right away. Um, you know, if they can play, if you know, if they can limit the shots and you know, play no rebounds, they they can hang. You know, with Hudson, I don't, I don't know if they've got, I don't know if they've got the offensive firepower to, you know, to crack Hudson's defense, but they should be able to limit Hudson's chances. And you could get in, you know, the situation where we said, did Eau Claire Memorial overlook Superior? Um, Hudson is used to playing Eau Claire Memorial and Eau Claire North, two really high energy Big Rivers teams. Um, I, you know, we've said before, high school kids can be dumb. Um, you know, Davis is going to have to stay on top of them not to let up because if they do, a Spash can get them. Well, I, I think that that Superior Eau Claire, no, you, Eau Claire Memorial game, you might, you know, the shot heard around the state. I think, I think that got everybody's attention that you cannot overlook anyone. Um, and I, I, don't, I don't know at, at what point we have to, you know, start calling Jason Kalen, you know, the master sandbagger. Um, you know, he just kind of <laughs> coasts through the regular season and then dials it up, you know, once the playoffs come around. This isn't the first time he's done that to us. Is he Claude Lemieux? <laughs> Only scores in the playoffs? Oh, I thought you were calling him a turtle. No, no. Um, among his many other reputations, Claude Lemieux, his points per game was much higher in the postseason than <clears throat> it was in the regular season. Yes, it was. Well, that was Jamie Langenbrunner, too. Made the mistakes of watching him in the playoffs and then picking him the next year during the regular fantasy season. And yeah, he doesn't score in the regular season. Scores when it counts. So you guys are looking at a Chippewa Falls and Superior to be a really tight game. And Hudson should be able to beat Spash. Yeah, I think the the superior the the yeah, the the superior uh Chippewa Falls game, you know. Next goal wins. You know, whoever and scores a goal wins. This is probably going to like tick off a bunch of people in sections two, three, and four. I still think this section has, if you look at all four teams remaining, is still the best section in the state. Um, it's either this one or section three. I, w- I would, okay, I'll, I'll buy into that. I was going to say not section four. Okay. Wanakee, we'll get into section three later, but I, I, I have something to say about that. Yeah, should okay. go on to the girls. Yeah, let's go on to the girls. 
Section one. Yeah, one one versus four, two versus three, as as it you know as it should be, as God intended. Central Wisconsin uh, this, against Pines, Superior against Hayward. I was watching the Superior Northern Edge game, and um, at the end of the first period, Northern Edge led that game four to two. Superior had the first goal, then Edge answered back. Superior had the third goal, then Edge answered back, two to two. And then the Edge got two goals in the final uh two minutes and 14 seconds of the first period to take a four, two lead. And I'm like, wow, we're like brewing for an upset. And uh, the edge took eight shots for the remainder of the game. Uh, the, the upset ended superior picked up one in the second and then three more in the third to, to, to finally get back to victory. But yeah, the edge, they took zero shots in the second period and eight in the third. Uh, good, good comeback there by superior on a team they probably should have been ahead of in the first place maybe they overlooked them it happens yes it does um, and now you know they get to they don't get to host this one like they did against the edge they've got to go to hayward uh to face the hurricanes um and then yeah the pines that's, gets to that's already to, been switched to wednesday Yep, both Superior yeah. games have been switched to Wednesday already because Superior is already closed school for tomorrow. And then Pines in the Storm, and there's been many years where Pines was the two seed in this section and the Storm was in their way, and this year they're the four seed, and I don't know. That's it's It's been a tall task for them every year. Yeah, I think that the, the Storm is just too deep. They'll they'll wear them down. Yeah, I, well, I think this I think this is one that's going to hold true to the, the seating and you know going into the sectional final. I think you're going to end up with Central Wisconsin against Hayward in that sectional final, and then that'll be right up there in the Berg's neighborhood. Yeah, I'll be at that final. Not my original plan, but many mites threw my original plan into disarray. <laughs> um, Superior and Hayward played earlier this season. It was a 3-2 Hayward win in overtime. So that should be a really nice sectional final on Wednesday when that one does happen. How did Hay did Hayward and uh, the Storm play this year? Yeah, uh, they, they know played. they they played very early in the season. It was a four nothing Storm win. We were at that and one, I, and I think they played later in the season. Too. And it was an overtime Storm win. Um, okay. I think it was one to nothing or two to one. So they call. So Hayward did close the gap on the storm as the season went on, but they still got to get past Superior. Well, yeah, Hay or, Hay uh, Hayward Hayward doesn't have the depth that the the storm does, but Hayward's got some good players, and they have two they have two freshmen who, when we saw them play, it was their their first high school game. Um, they've developed quite a bit over the course of the season. Um, I tell you their names, but they escape me. Um, but they have they have two two very good freshmen on their team. So yeah, they they've improved over the over the course of the season. Yeah, Riley no, Springer think... is a defenseman and uh, she's a junior, and Reese Sheehan is a freshman. And like they have like their their top end is as good as the Storms. They just don't have the depth. Still looking for the Storm to be uh, their sectional loose. I think that I'll enjoy watching the sectional final at Greenheck, regardless of who's in it. Okay. Let's go to Division Two, Section One, boys. Once again, one versus four, two versus three. No surprises. Yeah, we don't usually talk right. about which coaches specifically nominate players of the week, but the last time Rice Lake and Hayward played, uh, Rice Lake coach Josh Engel was one of the people that nominated Hayward goalie Logan Abrick for player of the week. That was a two to one game that Rice Lake won uh, in overtime, and Abrick had, I think it was 65 saves in a two to one game. He, yeah, he didn't even like include text, he just sent me the scoreboard and it said player of the week, something like that. Uh, a picture of the scoreboard because they, <laughs> they counted they count shots on the scoreboard there um, 
and yeah, it was, yeah, it was, it was, a, it was a good one. Um, and like I said, like even in the Marshfield game in the first round, Hayward, um, they got outshot bad by the Marshfield Tigers, fifty-seven to twenty, in shots, um, but they managed to win that game four to three. They're not, they're not a super strong team. They have an excellent goaltender. Um, and they're they're strong enough to to hang around with guys. Um, if they can pull that off against Rice Lake again, that's a tall, that's a tall order. And the game is in Rice Lake. Yes, Amory and New Richmond, the I ninety four matchup. Those two teams used to be in the same conference until New Richmond decided to join the Big Rivers. Right. I believe they played earlier this year. And New Richmond is uh, hosting this game. They played earlier this year. New Richmond won the game three to nothing. Um, outshot Amory 32 to 12. So Amory's going to have to pick it up offensively. Allowing 32 shots, is that's not particularly bad. But they're going to have to pick it up offensively if they want to if they want to have a shot in this one. And then, you know, we could very well see Rice Lake and New Richmond playing in the in the final. They've already played twice. They're in the Big Rivers Conference together. Uh, how did they do? Rice Lake beat New Richmond seven to three one time and two to nothing the next time. So two very different outcomes there. But Rice Lake was on top of both of them. Okay, let's move on to boys division one section two. And what do we got here? One and five. And six and two. Yep, the number six, De Pere, beats uh, conference opponent number three, Ashwabanon, uh, four to three in their game. So they get to, to play the number two seed in Nina. And Notre Dame gets, gets Fond du Lac. Um, Fond du Lac, uh, five seed, beat Bayport uh, in a game where beat Bayport wildly outshot them um i think that was part of fond du Lac's game plan not necessarily to get out shot but um their defensive zone we've seen this from ryan sarazen before oh yes uh, he called it the ryan sarazen ropadope the ryan sarazen ropadope we saw it when in you know those years in the early 2000s when they were playing in state championship games i mean he won a title and played in three other state championship games um he likes to play the box plus one in the defensive zone where four of your guys are playing a box like it's a penalty kill and they're collapsing in on the net and you have one guy attacking the puck. And when you play that kind of defense, you're going to give up shots, but they're all going to be from outside low percentage shots. And as long as your defense does a good job cleaning up in front of the net, you're going to get wins. And that's what they did against Bayport. Bayport outshot them, but they weren't really high quality shots. And Fond du Lac was cleaning up all the slop in front of the net. Uh, they got a couple chances. I believe uh, Brett Sable, uh, who we talked about back in the Badgerland Conference Tournament, had two goals in that one, uh, and Fond du Lac got the win. Uh, they're probably going to try the same thing against Notre Dame because Notre Dame is is a faster, deeper team than, than Fond du Lac is. Um, first line to first line, Notre Dame's not any stronger than Bayport was. Bayport's first line is, is fantastic, but they're deeper than Bayport was, so it'll be a, a taller order for Fond du Lac. Here taking on Nina on the bottom half of the bracket there. You kind of like Nina Hortonville Menashe's chances in that one. Well, you want oh, and- if you're them, you want to stay out of the penalty box because that, you know, the De Pier um, you know, beat Ash Wabanon. And let's see, all except one of the goals scored in that game was a power play goal. De Pier jumped out. They got they got two goals um during a, a major power play in the first period. Um, and that, you know, proved to be the difference in the game. But all the all, all their goals were power play goals. So that what you said about Nina, too? You don't want to be in the penalty box against Nina because they capitalize on it? Oh, they're, they're almost 50% on their power play. Mm. Yeah, their power play is insanely good. Mm. That one should be pretty good. Let's go over the girls' side. Section two. What do we got here? One and four and two and three. Hey, hey, St. Croix Valley playing the Western Wisconsin Stars on Alaska. 
traveling to Hudson. And that one with the fusion and the star, the Western Wisconsin stars, I believe that the fusion and them, uh, fusion won both games against them this year during the regular season. And there was, and you know, but they were close games, if I remember correctly. I don't have them called up. Uh, they beat them. Me. They beat them four to one in the Fusion's second game of the season, and then in January they beat them five to two. So both uh, that was the big thing. Yeah, the, for the Fusion, they had they had split with most of the other teams in the section, but they had beaten Western Wisconsin twice. Um, That's why they're the one in four seeds. Mm-hmm. And then on Alaska Hudson, you, you know, that one there, it, you watch it. I watched the game uh, on Alaska against the Stars, and that, that was tight all the way to the end. But, you know, that was two goalies that, you know, had excellent games in that one. Uh, I had that one up. I had that one up, but I wasn't really watching it. Um, there was just too many. I had eight games going on my screen at a time, so. I could only really pay attention to one of them. <laughs> the other ones were just up so I could update the scores on our website. So is anybody surprised that, you know, the Eau Claire area stars would play a really good game and lose by two? Um, wasn't that their MO this season? That's Much. pretty close to their MO. Really good game, but lose by one or two. Yeah. Yeah, they don't have they don't have much punch. Yeah, you know, that was a rematch of their uh both teams, their second game of the season, which was a three to two final that the Stars had won at Hobbs Ice Arena. And Onalaska and Hudson have not played this year, um, unless I'm blind, which is highly possible. No, I don't believe they did play this year. And Hudson is hosting that one. Correct. Yep. So, that, I mean, this is anybody could go. St. Croix split with. I believe both on Alaska and Hudson. And then I know they lost to on Alaska to close out the regular season and they beat Western Wisconsin twice, but Western Wisconsin has been playing with everybody all year. So uh, anybody one through four could come out of here. Boys division two, section two, number one, Lakeland Thunderbirds taking on the Antigo Red Robins. Number two, Rhinelander Hodags taking on the Mosinee Indians. One, two, three, four. Well, the Robins finally got that uh, gorilla off their back that is the Wapaka Comets. They've, um, you know, we, we talked about earlier how this, you know, how the Great Northern Conference was, you know, five teams up here and three down there. Well, you know, Wapaka, the only team they could beat was Anago, and they've been beating them consistently for four years. Um, but the Robins finally did uh, snap out of it and beat them eight to two. Um, I think we're, we're, we're expecting that game uh, to get switched to Wednesday. Um, it's going to be snowing pretty good tomorrow, but if, if I, I'd like to get to that game, if, if, well, I'm not, if they do have it tomorrow, I'm not driving up there, but if it's Wednesday, I'll go up and catch that one. That should be, I mean, yeah, like yeah, Anago was 0 and 7. Their seniors were 0 and 7 against Wapaka. Uh, coming into that game so yeah that was a big one for them i don't they have 11 skaters and and a goal oh my god um like i don't know that they can hang with lakeland in three periods i no, i say that they've beaten rhinelander and mozani this year who are the two and three seeds they have beaten them both so i mean it is it is theoretically possible but it's going to be hard for 11 guys to skate with lakeland uh, for 51 minutes uh, on the other end, Mosini and Rhinelander split two games. And if I'm remembering correctly, both of them were kind of ass kickings. Um, Rhinelander beat Mosini six to three in Mosini. We were there for that one. And then on the other one, Mosini beat Rhinelander, I think it was eight to two in Rhinelander. Uh, so like nothing is learned from either of those. <laughs> um, I mean, Mosini controlled the play even in the six to three loss that they had, but they gave up enough like odd man rushes and, and uh, plays like that for Rhinelander that like you can't, 
I mean, you can't give you, it doesn't matter how much of the play you're controlling if you keep giving up three on ones and two on ones and breakaways, um, because those are those are high percentage plays. Uh, so like you can't there's not a lot to learn from that. Um, I will say that, you know, I did not think very highly of Mosinese goaltending in that game, but we saw their goal, same goalie play against Lakeland. And he put up 44 saves in a shutout. Um, and there were some good chances by Lakeland there in the great Northern conference tournament. So um, if he's got, I mean, he's a freshman, so there's the learning curve to everything. Um, but if he's starting to get some confidence and he's putting up saves like that, then, you know, Rhinelander uh, two seed could be in big trouble. And conf- confidence is a big thing for a goaltender. You bet it is. Well, I mean, one of the problems, one of the problems I've, I've seen from several we've, I've seen, I don't know what it is. I've seen several freshman goalie this year. And one of the problems I'm seeing out of a lot of them is that they're too deep in their net. They're not coming out and challenging the shooter. And I think a large part of that is confidence. Um, Whether they're afraid of getting um, short, you know, pass across the net and they can't get across in time or what else, but they're, they're staying too deep in their net Um, and simply stepping out a foot 18 inches further um would cut off that cuts off a lot of net um when you're looking at the cone from the puck to the pipes it, it cuts off a lot of net and then that, that that is that the, a big part of that is just being confident enough to do it um because you know you come from bantams to high school the puck comes at you a lot faster and staying back farther gives you more time to react to it you know we've talked about this before when my brother was playing with team wisconsin they got a chance to skate at a practice with the badgers and Danny Heatley took a shot that my brother, <laughs> Team Wisconsin goalie, played in the national title game for Team Wisconsin. Danny Heatley took a shot he didn't even see. It was by him so fast. Um, you know, going from high school to D1 is a bigger leap than Bantams to high school, but still, it's that kind of thing. A freshman goalie, it takes a while uh, to, to get up that confidence, to get up to speed. And if if the Mosini goalie is, is there now, um, I, I, I think the Rhinelander is going to have trouble. And I think Lakeland could even have um, some trouble because, you know, it is or, Anago. Or, or Anago. Yeah. Or Anago. So what are you, what are you saying? I'll tell you this much. So Danny, he <clears throat> blew it by a lot of goalies well, yes. while he was in, while he was in the NHL. He one year, it's he was just, just an example, you know, one year he was a 50 goal scorer. Let's move on. And then he decided to drive a car fast. Things oh, were my God. That was the end of it. That's, he was just never the same player after that. Madison Edgewood taking on South Prairie. Verona going to Wanake. This some section, teams, like... Some teams that are was, very familiar with each other. There are. I was very concerned with two of the regional final games. I did not expect... Sun Prairie to hang with Edgewood like that a three to two game. There's only a a 10 shot advantage in favor of Edgewood 36 to 26. And then even more surprising was Wanaki over Madison Memorial two to nothing and shots were even. Um, Memorial could play defense. So they could, they were a pretty good defensive team. They, They can, but I mean, you still, you expect, I would, I, I, that, that one was like the, one of the more surprising things I saw in the day. Um, Ed, and well, Edward over some Prairie. That was, that was surprising to me too. Well, that, did, did Sock Del, Prairie, did, well, was, was Sock Prairie over Reedsburg an upset? Well, um, Reedsburg won both those games by one goal this year. And this year, one, uh, RWD was up two to one at the end of the first period, but they gave up three goals in the first three minutes of that second period. And I listened to uh, the, that on the radio a little bit and RWD couldn't stay out of the penalty box. And I don't know, I don't know how many of their goals in that game were power play goals, but I, I know that, you know, that takes the wear and tear on the, on your team. When you, you know, you have to keep killing off penalties through it. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, um, I was listening to RWD's uh, regional semifinal game against Baraboo, and what I learned <laughs> from the broadcasters is that RWD is a bunch of thugs who who late hit everybody that they see. So, yeah, 
Well, we, we won't talk about the Baraboo broadcast <clears throat> team. <laughs> the, the, this is that is one where I don't care what sport you're playing, and it's Baraboo against Reedsburg in it. Depending on which broadcasters you listen to, the other team's probably one of the dirtiest pl- teams that you'll ever see. Well, I think like the 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 play by play man that I was listening to actually cops to that like in the late in the third period because he he's like I'm from Baraboo, we hate Reedsburg. And I'm like, all right, I get it now, <laughs> but. Um, you know, going back to that Sun Prairie game, Sun Prairie led that game two to one at one point, and yep. Ed- Edgewood actually had to come from behind to end up winning that one. And you know, to me, that was a little surprising too, listening to to the broadcast on that one. Um, this well, and that uh, provides Edgewood, the coach with that provides the coaching staff with good wake up call material for all the practices that follow after that. You're like, you look at what happened to Eau Claire Memorial. Look at what happened to Eau Claire North. We were down two to one against an eight seed. Look at what happened to Waukesha. Like you guys can't do that again. You can't play like that again. Um, so when, when a game like that happens, you don't want to be the team that plays them next. Like Sock Prairie is um, like, they better be really amped up and ready to go uh, on Tuesday or Wednesday, whenever that game happens. <laughs> Edward and Sock did play earlier this year um, one game, and I, I think Edgewood won that one like nine to three or something like that. I'm not sure off the top of my head. But that that is very well a game that could be postponed till Wednesday because I do know Sock Prairie School District has closed for tomorrow already. So, And I know that Wanaki and Verona is postponed until Wednesday, and that game should be exciting. Um, the- that game is going to be a slugfest. Those two teams are going to go at each other so hard. You know it. It's going to be intense. And I don't think, I, I, I really think it's going to be a one goal game. Uh, the last time they played, it was a two goal game. Uh, was one of them an empty netter? Let me look. Yep. The, so, yeah, it was, there was an empty netter. Um, for Wanaki, it was a five, uh, a five, three final with an empty netter. So yeah, one goal game. Uh, Verona actually outshot Wanaki by a ton in that game, um, but Wanaki had obviously they had the the, the goals. Um, so yeah, that one should be a, a barn burner. Um, and then they'll get to play. Yeah, the winner of Edgewood and Sock. Um, you know, we all kind of predicted Edgewood would get to the sectional final. I still think that's true. And I still think that what I said last week is true, that uh, I think Verona has a better chance of beating them than Wanaki does. Um, it's just a matchup thing. I mean, Wanaki and, and Edgewood played a couple of weeks ago, and it was it was not fun for Wanaki. Um, so I, I think that, that uh, Verona matches up a little, even though they're the lower seed, I think they match up a little better. Now, now do you remember last year in the playoffs? It was supposed to be Verona playing uh, Edgewood last year. And yeah, Edgewood won their game, and then they had to drop out for – Because of COVID. Yeah, they got sick. And, you know, I, I still say that would have been the one team that would have gave uh, Verona a hard time. Well, most of that, that Edgewood team from last year is still – It is bad. J, JJ Weebush and Cody Menzel, you know, they were both there last year. They're both there this year. Parker uh, Mern is senior. there. Yeah, Parker Burn is there. They're both seniors this year. I don't know if, if Mern is a senior or not, but uh, the only reason I know that Weebush and Menzel are seniors is because they're player of the year finalists. You got to be a senior for that. Sure do. Section three for the girls. Metrolinks taking on the Icebergs and the Cap City Cougars and Verroqua. Delmar Scanlon, what you think? Well, the Lynx, you know, and the Icebergs have played twice this year. And, you know, this this is the Badger Conference sectionals, what this boils down to. And, I mean, all seven teams in this were, are in the Badger Conference. Um, so you got the Metro Lynx against the Icebergs. Uh, this will be their third meeting this season. Uh, last time they met at Madison Ice Arena was December 4th. And the Lynx won that game seven to two. And then they played at Stoughton. And that one was 
January 8th and a 4-1 to win for the Metro Lynx. And MJ, you know how the, those two rinks, you know, I would say probably have some of the softer ice yes. of the rinks <laughs> race yes. in, in, within the state, which yes. you, know, you know how it'll slow you down a little bit. But, you know, both teams are used to playing on that type of the surface, you know, for their home games. But I think that, you know, the Lynx will end up winning that game. And then Sun Prairie, Viroqua. Viroqua had Beaver Dam. Beaver Dam, to put it nicely, struggled this season. Um, they uh, So Viroqua won in that game in the last round. Wasn't surprising. Uh, a three to nothing winning for the Cap City Cougars over the Badger Lightning. And I think this is going to be a close game, but I, I picked Viroqua to come out of this one and the one, two seed advance to the Saturday game. No, I think... believe it was our most recent player of the week. Uh, Keegan Sanderfoot. She had the two overtime winners or she was the one before last week. Uh, Rachel Simonson yeah. was last week from Viroqua, but the week before was Keegan Sanderfoot. She had all three goals in that cap city win over the Badger lightning. Del, you think this was a down year for cap city? One, I think part of it is is getting used to a new coach because last year they didn't play WIAA at all. That's right. Um, they they played Waha the whole time, and so I think part of this was you know getting used to a new coach and uh, coach getting used to the players and, and, and everything. But didn't Metro I mean, Lynx have the same thing last year? The Metro Lynx. Yeah, were they a Waha yeah. last year? Yeah, I don't. I don't is, know. Is is this the point where we say it's it's tough to beat a team three times in one season? <laughs> yeah, and every year we get proven wrong on it, right? Uh, actually, it's me that usually says it's tough to win beat a team oh, three okay. times, and you're the one that comes back and tells me no, it ain't. If you beat it's them not. twice, it's just... <laughs> team that beat the team that won the first two games wins eighty percent of the mm-hmm. third games. But it sounds good. Does sound good. Yeah, it it, it, think... it 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 ranks right up there with the two goal lead as the worst lead to have in hockey. <laughs> rather have I'd much rather have a one goal one. lead. Seriously, I think the three game. I think the three game thing mm-hmm. really did come from the NFL. You pay you play two games against a team in your conference, and you won them both, and then you meet them again in the playoffs. And at that time point, you're both NFL playoff teams. That's not the same as th- uh, two high school hockey teams <laughs> playing three times in a season. Um, it's not, you know, professional athletes playing in the playoffs. It's, it's a different thing. Uh, I really think that's where that one came from. I think yeah, to answer your question, I think you'd have to consider this a down year for Cap City. They're 12 and 11. And uh, looking at their schedule, I don't think they have a top six win this year. No. No, they don't. They don't have a win against a top six team. And you've probably never, it's, it's been a long time since you've been able to say that about Cap City, um, where they're just sitting a game above 500 and they don't have a win against a top six team. So I think, yeah, you'd have to consider it a, a down year for them. Um, but, you know. Here they are in the sectional semis against Roqua. Right. And it doesn't take a lot. Um, you know, they lost to the Metro Lynx earlier. Um, they lost one game three to nothing. The other one was five to one. Three to nothing is not that far apart. A couple of bounces go a different way. You get a penalty or two and you're right back in that game. Um, so, I mean, it's not beyond the realm. The big thing for the Metro Lynx is that uh, they're very, very deep. Uh, they don't have the top end of a couple of the other teams in the girls, um, but they're very, very deep. So there's no gaps. Um, you're never out there against a line that's just holding on for dear life. They're they're all playing uh, hard and and pushing the puck forward. So um, that's going to be that's going to be the thing for everybody else to get through. Uh, I would like to see Viroqua. That would be really cool, uh, just because they're the second smallest team in the state in terms of enrollment. That'd be really cool if they made it. You look at the you look at the Metro Links. Two years ago, they were playing in the state championship game last year because of COVID. They didn't get their chance, you know, and they and they changed coaches after the championship, mm-hmm. uh, the championship run. So I don't know if you can say a whole lot about coaching in the playoffs. Do you coach it any different? 
Um, Playoffs. <laughs> but I think it's going to be interesting to see how the Metro Links do play in this. They haven't. Now, what is it? They didn't play any games last week. And the last game they played was February 12th against the Warbirds, and they won that one three to one. Okay. Is there a chance there's some rust? We'll find out. Rust. Here on mute, burglar. They're, they're just well rested. Yeah. yeah, but you've also seen a lot of you've also seen a lot of well rested teams come out and be very sluggish. Well, I, I don't know that you'll see them be I think if you see rust, it's gonna come, it's gonna affect them more offensively than it will defensively. Yeah. Um like their their passes aren't going to be where they need them to be to be making offensive chances and scoring goals. You know, um, will the that, hands that, be that'll, there? Yeah, that'll clear up within a period. You know, by the end of the first period, that should be gone. Um, and if and if if it's if, if if they do have rust and it's offensively, they're not going to be in any trouble because defensively, you don't have to be as precise. You know what I mean? Um, you just you know got to stop the person coming at you. That's a lot easier than making a, a cross ice pass tape to tape. So, uh, you know, I don't think, I don't think Rust will be a huge factor. They might, yeah, might be incredibly well rested and come out of the gates like the flash. Let's move on. Division two, section three, Baldwin Woodville, number one seed taking on BRF, Black River Falls. Bottom half of the bracket, River Falls Wildcats taking on the Somerset Spartans. And this this is one where the uh, Black River Falls, you know, may not want to stay out of the penalty box. Uh, they scored two shorthanded goals in in their their win over West Salem. And I hope like Baldwin Woodville has this game circled on their schedule in the locker room because this is the game they lost each of the last two years. As the number one seed, they lost the sexual the sectional semi uh, each of the last two years. So, like, they got to figure that out. To, to Black River? No. Um, one was, was to Summer Menominee. Set? One was to Menominee. The, the first year of two divisions, it was to Menominee, who played Somerset in the sectional final. I don't remember who it was last year. Okay. Somerset, the number two seed, they're going to host uh, River Falls. As I, you know, we've said for other teams, River Falls plays in the big rivers. The big rivers, um, so they're battle tested. The top four, the top four schedules in Division Two are the four teams that play in the Big Rivers Conference. Um, so River Falls, like Somerset's, not going to throw anything at them that they haven't seen before. But Somerset just keeps kind of chugging along year after year. Obviously, they went to the state tournament uh, both years of Division II. Uh, they're well poised um, to do it again this year. Uh, that should be a good one. I believe River Falls went to overtime to beat Regis Altoona McDonald, um, three against the six. So two overtimes, actually. Uh, so that one got one in the the four on four portion of the game. You know, it's it's funny you you mentioned that against Regis. You look at you look at this. And none of us has said this during this broadcast, but you look at the whole Eau Claire area as it is. Chippewa Falls girls out, ECA Stars out, Regis out, Memorial out, North out. It's kind of funny that I mean none of those teams made the sectionals. Are you Christ. saying that there's there's a lot of ice time available to rent at Hobbs? <laughs> no. <laughs> Chippewa Falls is still in though, so. <laughs> yep. Because they knocked off North. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay, um, you're right about that, but. but. Uh, but that Baldwin Black River Falls game. That'll be the second time these two teams meet this season. Uh, back in December, Baldwin won that game four to one. Uh, the two games that Baldwin played against Somerset, first game was a seven to five win for Baldwin, and the second game ended in a two two tie. 
So I Did mean, Somerset he, and River Falls play. I'm not sure. We should look this stuff up before we start recording. Well, <laughs> what fun is that? You, you can only have so many browser tabs open. Uh, Somerset beat River Falls <clears throat> six to two uh, on February fourth. So they did play not too long ago. And Somerset outshot River Falls fifty to sixteen in Ouch. that in that six to two win. So River Falls is going to have to pull something out of their hats to turn that around because that's a, a wildly disparate game. Boys, Division One, Section Four. Oh, where do we begin? Number two, University School, bottom half of the bracket, playing number three, Arrowhead. Top what side. do we call that? The potential battle between two teams that can't score? I thought you were going to say that that's the uh, Gleaming Escalade game. No, we don't say that out loud. <laughs> um. Top half the bracket, Brookfield taking on KMMO, who knocked off Waukesha six to five. KMMO believe... four for four on the power play in that game. I mean, there weren't there weren't a whole lot of penalties in that game, but KMMO four for four on the power play, including uh, well, the, yeah, the the two goals at the end of the the first period uh, that were during a. Uh, major power play for checking from behind. So, yeah, four for four in the power play. That's uh, oh, yeah. You, apparently, you don't want to take penalties against them. Yeah, well, my, did, a major penalty is a good K way to lose ball. a hockey game. You think? Now, correct me if I'm wrong, MJ, because I, I don't live down there. KMMO and Waukesha, they both come out of Waukesha County Youth Hockey, right? I'm sorry, you, you cut out. What did you say? KMMO and Waukesha, both their rosters come out of Waukesha County Youth Hockey, right? I believe that is true. Okay. I'm, like, I'm, one, I'm wondering if all three schools in KMMO come out of Waukesha County, because I know that uh, Kettle Moraine does. Um, like, like they're, they're always, you know, in eight beats of one, and like all these guys know each other. They played youth hockey together. You know, they, they were teammates as squirts and peewees and bantams. Uh, and then they get to but high you school, know, so that's got to be cool. But, you know, here's the thing. KMMO and Waukesha, they're big rivals. So that's a, that was a rivalry game out of the shoot. And you look at and you look at a player like Tyler Dale, I mean, he can carry a team. But at this point, I mean, it looked like he could only carry this team so far. KMMO, I did see them earlier in the year against Janesville, and they put up seven goals in that game. So they can score. Now, I don't know how, you know, Janesville scored eight and beat them. So, you know, me might be one of those games where whoever has the last shot. You know, Brookfield beat the Ice Force by one. You know, Ice Force had a decent season this year compared to what they normally have, but um, – Brookfield's also gotten better as the years went on. The season has went on. Arrowhead and University School, though, that's two schools that really like to get after each other. And uh, Uline Ice Arena is going to be packed for that one. I'm not expecting a high scoring game in that one at all. No. Um, I was watching the, the Arrowhead Marquette game. And uh, it took a period and a half before Arrowhead scored. It was one to one after two, and then they got three goals in the third period. Um, I had forgotten until I watched that game that I was watching it on live barn um, that Marquette has the the Michigan style painted helmets, and just please stop doing that. <laughs> Hockey helmets shouldn't have logos on them. Uh, anyway, I was watching that game, and like, yeah, Arrowhead was just stifling in their defensive zone. Marquette only took 18 shots, uh, but in the offensive zone, they didn't really get a lot going. Uh, they ended up with 30 shots in the game <clears> and they sort of wore them down towards the end. And uh, the last goal of the game was an empty netter. Uh, so three to three to one with the, and then the empty netter. And then 
yeah, I think their their defense will match up really nice against U School's offense this year. So that should be a nice two to one, three to two at most game, I would think. Arrowhead has good goaltending. I, yeah, I, I have Shutt seen is, Arrowhead. Devin Shutt is second in the state in save percentage, I believe. Tied with Logan Avery um, behind Tyler Frummels. I did see them against Shanesville this year. They shut them out to nothing. Um, I didn't get a chance to see USM this year, so I, I can't really say a whole lot, but I it froze just up looking at what their record has been this year, looking at their games, it hasn't been the normal USM. I'm sorry, what's it? Just keep going. So who, who do you guys think is going to represent this in the sectional finals? USM and one of the other teams. <laughs> uh, probably Brookfield. Just the, I mean, if you look at the number of upsets we've seen, with still the majority of the teams that are su- supposed to win, air quotes, have won. Um, so Brookfield, I'm going to take them over KMMO. Unless, of course, they take a, a major penalty for boarding or checking from behind or head contact or whatever, then I'm going to give it to KMMO. Don't take major penalties. It's a good way to lose a hockey game. Girls, Section 4. Bay Area, Bay Area Ice Bears, number one seed, taking on number five seed, University School. Number two, Fox Cities, taking on number three, Warbirds, on the bottom half of the bracket. Well, you know, this is one that, you know, like we said uh, for sectional three, where it was the Badger Conference, this is the Eastern Shores Conference. And, you know, it wasn't all that long ago they had their conference tournament. And the championship game of that tournament was the number one against number two in this sectional. And that was the third time that they played this year. This will be their fourth time. And, I think the one, I believe they tied once. They, they tied in our tournament over in Chippewa Falls. They tied one to one. You know, this is a game that I personally, I see a playing, you know, out as one against two, making it to the sectional finals and stuff. And, the last game they played was a five to three game in which the ice bears came out on top. So, you know, Fox city is a pretty good team. We know Bay areas, you know, they, these two teams have been in the top six all year. They've been one in, they've been one and two pretty much all year. Yeah. And you, and you look at those two teams, those two could meet in the sectional final and with as well as both teams have had a wonderful season. One of them's not going to state. Well, I'm going to give the edge to Bay Area at that point because they haven't lost to Fox Cities yet. Um, they've beaten them twice and tied them once. So, I mean, you they have the edge in that particular matchup. Uh, two teams with a high top end. Um, I think Fox Cities actually has a little bit more top end than they do with Zillish and Rentmeister. Uh, probably the best one-two combo in the state, but I think Bay Area has more behind them. Well, you know, it's, they... it's hard to beat a team four times in one season. <laughs> well, they've only beat well, them they twice, beat so... and tied them. <laughs> <clears throat> but, I... You know, the the Warbirds have improved it as the season's gone on and, and everything, but I just don't think that they've got the depth to keep up with Fox Cities in that uh, sectional semifinal. And, you know, I have... I got to see university school one time this year, and that was when they played Cap City and came from behind to win that game three to two against Cap, uh, Cap City. Oh. Can't see, can't wait to see where this one shakes down at because this is going to be a good one to watch. Our last uh, sectional preview, Division Two, Section Four. Fond du Lac Springs take on Homestead, the McFarland Spartans, and the Oregon Panthers. Anybody want to take this one? I 
got to believe this is going to be a battle of one and two. They played earlier this year. It was a three to two game in, in Fondy's favor, but Oregon outshot them 45 to 24 in that game. Um, Oregon has one of the few top lines in division two that can skate with Fondy's top line. Uh, so that, I mean, it, that should be a, a real nice game. Um, Oregon had much more success against Wapan and Tyler Frommels than, than the Springs did at any point this season. Um, I, I was, that was another game that I had on and I was actually watching um, in my giant grid of games. And <laughs> I have, I have never seen a team execute so many like flawless odd man rushes and uh, one timers in front of the net and, you know, um, cross the slot passes to, you know, a guy on the other side wide open as I saw Oregon pulling off in that game. Um, like that was a game where I'm like, good God, I wouldn't want to be the goalie um, because like their, their puck movement between um, that, that, that in that top line was just phenomenal. Uh, really, really fun to watch. Um, if those two, two do meet in the final, um, it should be a, a really nice game. The, the big difference between the two is that Springs is a lot more consistent than Oregon is. Um, like we, you know, we saw it earlier in the year, we talked about Oregon's gigantic comeback against Janesville. Well, that, you know, comeback is fun, but they were down seven to one at one point in that game. Uh, Springs has never been down seven to one to anybody. Um, you know, they lost to Edgewood 10 to two. They lost to Edgewood again, eight to one. Um, Oregon just isn't as consistent as Springs is. Um, Springs, I mean, they've lost, they're not, you know, un, in, infallible, but um, they don't, you don't see that kind of loss out of them. So that'll be the thing like, which, which Oregon shows up. Fond du Lac Springs better in net. Well, Hayden Rising um, made his name as a freshman, and now he's a junior. Um, he's a good goalie. He's still, unless Ollie, I'm mistaken, he's still not very big. Hayden Rising, all he's done is win state championships. He knows nothing else. Yes. The first time he doesn't win a state championship, it's going to be just heartbreaking. Oh, he is bigger he's, now. He is 6'3". He grew. Did you guys see that highlight of Brady Welsh? Up in the Fairbanks the other night? Yes. Knocking the goalies. Obliterated uh, the water bottle. That was a nasty yeah. shot. But he was one of those that, kids. That's, that, that's, that's, that's why Bill's brother, Bob, never puts a water bottle on top of his net when he's playing goalie because he doesn't want some smart ass knocking the water bottle off of the net with a, a shot into the top like that. What I like Very to say sensitive. is that his... His fragile goalie ego can't handle it. Yeah. I mean, if you look at Springs' losses this year, I just went through some of from of Oregon's losses. Springs lost to Arrowhead two to one. Arrowhead is a strong defensive team. There's not really anything bad to say about that. They lost to Eau Claire Memorial five to two. You know, coming into the playoffs, Eau Claire Memorial was the second best team in the state. Five to two is not that bad a beat. Uh, they lost that game to Brookfield four to two, which surprised everybody. Uh, but still, two goal game. They lost to Nina seven to five. That was their worst defensive performance of the season. Uh, that seven goals was easily the most they've given up this season. Um, and then since then, they lost a game to Wanaki two to one. Um, so it's not like they don't have that that ten three loss, that eight to two loss. I mean, the, even the game they gave up seven goals, they scored five. So they're just they're just more consistent overall than Oregon is and, and, and a difference maker in that could be one thing that happened between now and when these two teams met back in December um, is you know Talon Blank is a sophomore so you know he I don't know how big of an effect he had on that first game but he's been on fire the last couple of weeks of the season he has really developed into a you know a a full-on threat on the ice at any time. Um, that, that could be a huge difference between when they, 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 they played last time and now. 
if they meet again now, which we think they're going to do, most likely. We bet That's Bill's they... firstborn child on it. <laughs> hey, but well, I'm I... keeping the second one. Well, yeah. <laughs> As we're talking about these games, you know, going on down to tomorrow, um, I have a feeling our game schedule for tomorrow night is going to get really light. I just ha happened to see that all the Madison area schools are closed tomorrow, including Edgewood. McFarland is closed. So I, I'm looking for probably seeing a few postponements going on tomorrow and being moved to Wednesday besides the ones we already talked about. You're not getting that much snow down there, though, right? It's ice? No, it's ice. Ice. Because yeah, up, up here it's snow. Like our yeah. our band here in Wausau is four to eight, but you don't have to go that far north before it gets to like the eight to twelve. No, ours is supposed to be ice coming down first, and then you know up around us a little further north in Madison, two to four inches of snow on top of the ice. Then there's us six here in the south, just over the state line. We're just supposed to get a little rain, maybe some ice, you know. Weatherman said the other day that southern Wisconsin it, is in a drought. Out in tropical it, Janesburg. Janesville School District Janesville, is closed sorry. tomorrow. It is closed? Yes. Wow. So do we want to talk about what our, our personal sectional final schedules are? Okay, I, I can go first on that. On Friday... On Friday, Dell stole my games. Yes, I stole... Burglars games, and I'll be at Chippewa Falls for a 4.30 p.m. game and the 7.30 p.m. game. And then I, on Saturday, right now, my goal is to be up in Fond du Lac for a 4 p.m. game or 1 p.m. game up in Fond du Lac, the boys' division two sectional four final, and then make a trip down to Sun Prairie for the Girls sectional three final. So you're expecting to see uh, Fond du Lac Springs in Oregon. More than what it camera. looks like on paper. Yes, bring your camera. Uh, burglar. Uh, yeah, I'm. Uh, damn it, man. I'm going over to Amory, Amory on Friday night, right? Yes. Amory on Friday night. And then uh, I'm going to find myself a cozy little bed and breakfast or something. Um, and then on Saturday, I'll be going to Somerset for that one. So that'll be Division Two, Section 1 and Division Two, Section 3. Yes. Uh, those were originally going to be the games that I covered, but then um, Everest Youth Hockey announced that Saturday morning will be the Mini Might Jamboree, and that'll be my daughter's first actual game hockey, so I'm not missing that. So Friday, I will be at Green Heck for girls section one, um, and because of when the Jamboree is and how long it lasts, I can't get to any of the Saturday sectionals, so I'm only doing one this year. And that leaves me as still out of commission, unfortunately. That's all right. We got seven. If Dell if Del manages to get to both of his, we got seven of the 12 covered by one of us, which is not bad considering that there's, you know, just a couple of us doing this. I might, I'll make it to the Sun Prairie one. I might be a couple minutes late getting there, depending on what time the boys final ends up in Fond du Lac. Well, thankfully for you, if it goes into overtime, first overtime is five on five, and the second is four on four, and all subsequent overtimes are three on three. So, it it's bugs me that the WIAA wrote new overtime rules this year, and the regular season and playoff overtime rules are different. I understand why they did what they did, but it still bugs me. What do you mean? You, you mean in the... Well, and well, in the postseason, do you still think it should be five on five all the way through? No, that's fine. I'm fine with going five on five, then four on four, then three on three. That's fine. Uh, it's just that they're different. In the regular season, it's five on five, and then immediately to three on three. Well, and I, you know when we and I understand why they. I understand absolutely why they did that. 
because as coach brand brand explained it to me when i emailed him like about the new rules he said that you know they were going to have a three on three for the state tournament this year for the tournament this year um and they didn't want kids to have the tournament necessarily be their only exposure to three on three and i was thinking about that when i saw the fact that the overtime rules are different i'm like teams play four on four all the time they do right now because guys are in the box so they didn't need to add the four on four overtime to the regular season because guys do that already they know how to play four on four um so they were just getting the three on three in there so guys would have exposure to it if that's the case i don't know why they left the five on five in there um just make it three on three if that's the goal but boy, I like three on three. That's some. If you got two teams that can fly up and down the ice, you got a great game going there. Three on three. Oh yeah, ask me about it from you know last Sunday. Oh God. Three oh men's three. league. Oh yeah, yeah, when we were playing Super Bowl Sunday, hockey. half the guys don't show up. More it's the Super Bowl. Of course, they're not going to show Several up. Several people who said they were going to play hockey instead of watching the Super Bowl did not show up. So Liars. we played. So like this yesterday, Sunday, we played uh, five on five and we had six guys on our bench. How many were on yours? We had six. We had six guys in each bench. So 12, 22 skaters. The Sunday before during the Super Bowl, we had nine skaters total. We played three on three with one guy on one bench and two on the other. And halfway through the guy that was one guy switched. So the other bench had two and one bench had one. Like it's the only time. In the three years I've been playing old man hockey that we stopped and took a break in the middle of the session. We stopped and just did nothing for like seven minutes. It was brutal. And I realized we we breathed hard. And I realized something that, you know, they made me think of the playoff format. I've never played three on three hockey before like that like i've done drills and stuff but i've never actually played three on three hockey so i got out there i'm like i don't know what to do it, it took it took me a real it took me all to realize oh when the puck's in our zone you're basically playing man on man you know right. you, you pick a guy and you you stay with them and then you know then you get down to the other zone and you know forget about this forward defense stuff. you just kind of rotate around and until you find yeah. a shot and give it's up an odd man rush fat old man it's, it's the net. three on three is not for fat old men it's not. No. Yeah. But if they well, played it guys, often enough. Twenty-two the guys is, last night. The week before, we had nine. When we think about three on three hockey, you know, the kids when they think about it, it's always that half ice, three on three against one goalie. We, we actually we, we 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 thought about just moving to one end, putting the the nets, you know, on on the opposite boards, and just sticking to one end of the ice, like a mite jamboree. Yeah, <laughs> we'll play Mike Jamboree cross style ice. hockey. Cross ice hockey. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it was bad. Well, guys, we went through all the sectionals. Uh, anything else we want to cover while we have everybody's uh, undivided attention here? Do we want to quickly make predictions, snap judgments? No. Yeah, come on. D one section one. Hudson. I got Hudson. Yeah, Hudson. Hudson. All right, D1, Section 2. Nina. Nina. Notre Dame. Uh, Notre Dame. D1, Section 3. Edgewood. Edgewood. I'm going Edgewood. Edgewood. Man, we're picking all the ones. Uh, D1, <laughs> Section 4. There's no one to pick here. Yeah. Arrowhead. Uh, let's go. I'm Arrowhead. gonna go with Brookfield. Wow. USM. That's the first time I've ever picked the highest seed in all the sections, but I'm going with USM. All right, girls, section one. Storm. Central Wisconsin. I'm trying to remember who's in that section. <laughs> Central Wisconsin, yeah. Hayward Superior, and Northland Pines. Now Central Wisconsin. Burglar, did you answer? Yeah, I said storm, yeah. Okay. Section two, St. Croix, Hudson, on Alaska, and Western Wisconsin. Hudson. Hudson. The Uh, Western Wisconsin. 
Section three, Madison Ice, uh, Metrolinx, uh, Viroqua Blackhawks, Cap City Cougars, and the Icebergs. Lynx. My, my heart says, says Viroqua, my heart says Viroqua I, I but my head says Madison. Exactly right, Junior. That's exactly what I was just going to say. It would be yeah, fun be to see. A, it would be fun to be. It's exactly what you said. It'd be fun to see a very small school to have that kind of excitement of a team going to state. Plus they're like the old, like I, you know, I made the maps that I just, I shared them on our Twitter account of like where the sectionals actually are. Viroqua is off by itself. Sure is. There's nobody by them in the state. Like, I mean, we need to get Dodgeville to stop playing Waha and start playing WIA hockey. And then there'll be another team down in that. Well, place. first thing they have to do, they'd have Jackson to prove Dodgeville their... part, part of uh, the links. I don't know. They're way out there. Section four, Bay Area, Fox Cities, Warbirds, and University School. Fox Cities. I'm going to go with Fox Cities just because I want to see our uh, former uh, second favorite hockey official down at the state tournament again. Although he'll probably be there anyway. Um, Mr. McGurk. Yeah. I think, gonna they're, I think they're going to have, I think they got something up their sleeve. They've been holding back all year. They've been holding back all year. Yes, going with Bay Area. Bears. They're going. They're 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 going. The they learned. They they spent the summer with Jason Kalen, learning these uh, sandbagging playoff sandbagging tricks. <laughs> all, all right. right. Uh, D two section one. Rice Lake, New Richmond, Amory, and Hayward. Rice Lake. Rice Lake. I yeah, Rice Lake, is, Rice, Rice Lake, Lake has been dominant all season for the third for the third year in a row. I believe that would be for Rice Lake. Section two: Lakeland, Rhinelander, Mosinee, and Antigo. Mosinee. I'm going to take Rhinelander. Once again, a school that hasn't been to the state tournament in a well, have they ever been to the state ever. tournament? I don't think so. No, burglar. I'm going to take Rhinelander. Go hold eggs. Say it. And I go. And then I'm going to take Lakeland. So we've picked all four teams in that one. <laughs> Section three, Baldwin, Woodville, Somerset, River Falls, and Black River Falls. Somerset. Somerset. I'm going to give it to Baldwin, Woodville this year. Yeah, me too. Okay. Okay. And section four, Springs, Oregon, McFarland, and Homestead. Springs. I think Springs. Springs, but Hayden Rising is going to have to be good in that sectional final if they play Oregon. Yeah, I'd like to see Homestead. We like Homestead. You know, yeah. Tony, Jeff Except for their helmets. No, it was Marquette. Never mind. It was Marquette that has the okay. painted helmets. But I, my, yeah, I think it's going to be Springs. Just they're the, they won the state tournament the last two years. They're the number one seed again. You can't pick against them. They're going. The they're going for the three Pete. Well, now it's the kiss of death. What? <laughs> what is? What is it? Hudson. Okay, they won back to back. Was it seventeen and eighteen? Yes. 19 USM one. 19 is the year that Chippewa Falls shocked Hudson and went to state. I remember that. And then 20 Hudson won again, I believe. No, no. Who who won the state tournament that year? In 21, Um, Hudson won it. 19, it was USM. 20, it was Verona. So you're looking at Hudson trying to win three state championships in five years. That's kind of insane. It's almost superior life. Yeah. A long, long time ago. I can still remember. Well, they have won. They already won. They won 17, 18, and 21. So that's three and five years. They're going for four and six years. Four and six. Okay. How many do they have? Total. And and in 2016, they lost to Appleton uh, two to one in the championship game. 
Trent and Bliss. Trent and Bliss, Michigan Trent. Tech. Yep, having a good year. He was in the Hobie Baker uh, talk. Yeah, he was one of the 80 nominees for the Hobie, ba- Hobie Baker Award. He this sure year. was. Um, yeah. So. Okay, there's our picks. Anything else you guys want to hit on? Uh, you'll probably have seen this on our site before we post the podcast, before you listen to the podcast, but I did post the uh, boys end of season award finalists tonight. Our five finalists for the Pavelski, Drewiski, and Dobbin Spec Awards. So those will be out there on the site for you to click on if you haven't already. Um, these uh, our awards, just as a reminder, they're not re- restricted to seniors like the Player of the Year. Uh, it's just uh, we put together lists, uh, the four of us, of each of us uh, twenty forwards, fifteen defensemen, and ten goalies. Uh, those lists are then collated uh, and sent out to the Wisconsin Hockey Coaches Association. The coaches are allowed to rank five players at each position, one through five. Um, those are then tabulated by me. Uh, we also vote, and that's how we got our winner and our finalists. And finalists were announced tonight, and the winner will be announced sometime down in Madison. Details to be finalized. Well, how about the girls' side? The girls' side. I'll be getting the names of the finalists to Junior tomorrow, if he doesn't mind putting them up. Uh, and, and also we'll give him the name of the ones that came in for the uh, Rachel Kenyon Award, which Rachel is picking the winner for. She hasn't gotten it back to me qu- quite yet because she's recovering from having a child. Uh, but MJ, congratulations, you asked, Rachel. MJ, you asked how many title state titles Hudson's won. Um, they've captured I, five. I was going to say, I'm guessing five. Five. Madison Memorial has eight, and Superior has thirteen of them. So, is Hudson number three in terms of winning state titles? Is there anybody like Madison East has won six or anything like that? Madison East is fourth with four. Okay. That was a long time ago. Very long time ago for Madison East. Cause they, I remember they, uh, they used to win them back and back in the day a few times. Um, I, was, I was, I was watching that superior Eau Claire Memorial game on IFAN. I'm not on IFAN. Was I watching it on IFAN? I was watching it on something. And one of the superior players, um last name Nelson. is Nelson. I asked on Twitter, is he related to Tim Nelson? Because for years we've been looking at the program we get, you know, at the state tournament every year. And you know, one of the things they have is the record book, most assists in a state tournament game, seven, Tim Nelson, Superior versus Wasa West, 1991. Most assists in a tournament, 10, Superior, Tim Nelson, 1991. Like, is he any relation to Tim Nelson? Just, yeah, that's his uncle. I'm like, all right. But uh, as my dad um, said, Nelsons are a dime a dozen up there. So, so, so with if Springs is able to make it to the state and go to the state championship game, they would be the only the second team to ever win three state championships if they were to win it this year. Three in a row. Yep, three in a row. With the other one being superior in ninety four, ninety five, and ninety six. Only a wonderful Anago team in 1993 stopped that streak from being even longer. <laughs> okay. Well, because it was Superior won in 92. They lost the championship game 2-1 to one in Anago in 93, and then 94. So, I mean, they were an overtime win away from winning 93-2 through, through 97. That's six in a row. That's crazy. Five in a row. Sorry, five in a row. Um, people, if, before you, uh, as you go on the site and uh, read about the people who are up for the uh, WIPH awards, feel free to stop by that donation box there and uh, help us out a little bit. Um, times are tough for everybody, especially We're WIPH. We're getting close. We're getting are close, we? but we still got a ways to go. Okay. If you can help out. 
Click on the box. Give till it hurts. What do trash you say as long as we can have a soda pop at the end of the day? Well, you can't have alcohol at a WIAA sponsored event. No. Apparently you can't even have signs for alcohol. Signs. Okay, guys, anything else? Nope, that's all. Okay, burglar, are you done? Yep. Delmar? I'm done. People, uh, keep an eye on the uh, on the site. We'll keep you updated on uh, when games are going to be changed because as you've heard the guys say tonight, there's going to be probably some postponements with the incoming weather. So we find out, we'll put it up there immediately. It's what we do. So for Dell, father and son, Berg, I'm Mike Kamet. Enjoy the rest of the games this week. You've been listening to This Week in Wisconsin Prep Hockey.